Hey, what's up guys? Flick here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wolves Career Mode and we have an exciting episode in store today. We'll be playing our league opener against Middlesbrough and we also have some action in the Carabao Cup against Oxford United. But first, I want to thank you all for the support that you left on episode one of this series. It was awesome reading over all the comments on YouTube and I also received a few messages on Twitter as well and I can already tell that there are so many loyal supporters within this Wolverhampton Wanderers Club and I really look forward to seeing what we can achieve with this career mode. There are a few matters that I'd like to discuss here at the start, including the poll results from the last video, as well as a few topics that were mentioned in the comment section of the last video. But the first poll had to do with international management, and I asked whether I should accept an international management offer if that opportunity did come up. And the majority of you said that, yes, I should look to pursue international management. And really, the only two nations that I'm looking to manage are England and Portugal. If either of those two nations decide to approach us about a job offer, I'll update you guys and we'll go from there. The second poll had to do with the commentary that I used during those simulated matches and you guys prefer the minute by minute commentary. So thank you for your feedback there. That's what I'll be using in any simulated matches moving forward. And just to be clear, I don't plan on simulating a ton of matches in this career mode. Really the only cases where I would simulate are preseason tournaments, as well as if we do decide to go the international management route, I would simulate some of the friendlies that I don't find to be that exciting. And last but certainly not least, I also asked what you thought I should do with the remainder of our transfer budget. We have about 8 million or so left to spend and it was a very close vote, but the majority of you voted for me to sign another player in this summer transfer window. So we'll look to do just that in this episode. Now onto a few topics that were brought up in the comment section of the last video. I had a few of you inform me of some unfortunate news regarding Carl Ikimi and last summer he was diagnosed with acute leukemia. That's a form of cancer and for that reason, we're not going to look to sell them in this career mode. We did receive an offer from QPR, but I'll be blocking all offers and allowing Ikimi to finish up the remainder of his contract at Wolves. Obviously, I want to show my support for Ikimi wherever possible, and keeping him in our squad is my way of doing that in this career mode. The next topic has to do with who will be starting as one of our first choice center backs, and I stated my logic for starting Bath in episode one. As far as I was aware, he's the club captain for the 2017-2018 season, but a few of you let me know that's not necessarily necessarily the case. Actually, Cody receives a fair amount of playing time and when he's starting, he serves as the club captain. So what I'll be doing is swapping Bath and Cody. In my opinion, Cody is the better player. He's younger, he has a higher overall rating. So it just makes sense for me to be starting him over Bath. But the same logic will still apply. I plan on giving all of our center backs a decent amount of playing time through the league matches and the domestic competitions. Finally, I wanted to address the release clause that I included on Podence's contract. And I was not aware that it's generally not a good idea to add a release clause. So the way that I'm going to resolve this is that next season, once we are eligible to approach Podaint about a new contract, I'll exclude that release clause. And as a result, we'll probably have to offer more for the weekly wages, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. And as a result, if we do end up selling Podaint at a later date, we'll receive more in terms of the transfer fee. Since the majority of you voted for me to sign another player in this summer transfer window, I wanna walk you through my thought process as to what players I'll be looking to add to our transfer shortlist and which positions I believe we need to improve our squad depth. So for the goalkeeper position, I think we need more squad depth, but I don't think that needs to come in the form of a player transfer. Alternatively, we can give our scout the instructions to look for a goalkeeper, bring in said goalkeeper, and put him through player training. And we can get very effective results that way. And we can more or less sign up a backup goalkeeper for free or whatever the cost is to send our scout to any of the particular countries. Now, for our defense, I don't think we need to improve in any areas. We have capable fullbacks and we also have a substitute or reserve fullback to use in the cup matches. And we have a total of six decent center backs in this team. So I think we're very solid defensively. As for the center mid position, I also think we have enough options here with Ndaye, Neves, Saiz, and Prince. So I'm not looking to sign a player from that position. Now our attack is still somewhere that I'm looking to improve upon. We signed Podance in the last episode, but he's not a natural striker. So for me, the transfer that would make the most sense 
is using the remainder of our funds to find a natural striker and use as a rotational player in combination with Bonatini. Keeping that logic in mind, I'll go over the eight players that I've added to my transfer shortlist. Four of them are attackers, four of them are goalkeepers, just in case the attacker negotiations fall through. But just to be clear, signing an attacker will be my priority. Bodvarshan is the first of the attackers, but I don't believe we'll be able to get into negotiations with him because he recently joined Reading. Afobe was probably the most popular suggestion or transfer suggestion of episode one. And I would love to bring him in. The main question is if we'll have the funds available to make that transfer happen. And also if we can negotiate to find a squad role that I'm happy with and Afobe is also happy with. Um, as was the case for Podence, I'm hesitant to offer a crucial first team player role because we have so many crucial first team attackers in our club already. And I don't want players to be unhappy in our squad and we ultimately have to sell them at a later date. So we'll see when that time comes, um, if we can make a deal happen that you know makes all parties happy. Um, Vincent Abubakar is another attacker that was suggested, but I don't believe we have the funds available to make that deal happen unless we were to do a player swap plus cash or something along that sorts. But I'll get into negotiations and see if we can somehow make that deal work. Moses Simone was another popular transfer suggestion, but unfortunately he recently joined Fluminense, so we won't be able to go in for him. Uh, kind of an interesting transfer for him to go from Genk to Fluminense. Now, the four goalkeepers I have here are Pereira, Svilar, Gunn, and Murich. And I'm not leaning on any of the, these goalkeepers. I pretty much just added the four. Once we have our full scouting reports back, I'll have a better idea of which of these players I want to pursue. We have two good pieces of transfer news. Bolton did agree to a 1.25 million transfer fee for Jack Price, which means we'll get about 1 million added to our transfer budget if the contract negotiations are successful. Also, one of our backup goalkeepers, Harry Burgoyne, was loaned out to Carlisle United. We do have confirmation that Jack Price completed the deal with Bolton, and we've had 950,000 added to our current transfer budget. Like I've done with previous transfers, I'll be speeding up the transfer negotiation footage for Afobe, and his market value set at 6.5 million. That is where we started our initial offer, but Eddie Howe was not having it. He increased it all the way up to 8.2, but we were able to meet roughly halfway at 7.5 million. I was pretty happy with that, only paying 1 million more than a Fobe's market value. Now, for the contract negotiations, we were pretty easily able to agree upon the squad roll contract length and not adding a release clause. However, the wages, signing bonus, and the goal bonus was a bit more difficult to find a middle ground. I didn't want to include a goal bonus because I feel like Afobe would be able to score 10 goals for the club, uh, but he was pretty set on that 66,000 for the wages. You can see here, I'm trying to get him to agree to a little bit less, but eventually I agreed upon the 66,000 for the weekly wages, as well as 840,000 for the signing bonus. Considering we won't be able to afford another youth scout after the signing of Afobe, I wanted to open up an option for those of you that are interested in the youth scouting system. So the poll question that I have for you is, do you believe we should utilize the scouting feature star feature from the EA Sports catalog? If we do sign a future star, we should be able to do so within the next episode, if not the episode after that. With it being the start of August and our squad being roughly finalized, I feel like now's a great time to have our first squad report of the series. And the way that I'll be structuring these squad reports is that I'll showcase the physical and mental attribute sections. If any of the players have an increase to their overall, I'll talk about them in more detail. But the first player that we will be talking about is Matt Doherty. He's gone up plus one and he does have growth to his crossing and long shot stats, which is awesome because we allow our fullbacks to push up and getting an attacking positions. So growth to those areas will be beneficial for us in game. The next player to have an overall increase is Willie Bully, our loanee. And despite his age being 26, his exceptional performances in, in game have allowed him to grow his long passing and stand tackle. Can't complain about that. Uh, we also have some growth to our backup left back. He hasn't actually featured in any matches, but because he is a young player, he's been able to grow several of his statistics. So maybe we'll look to feature him um, in more matches moving forward. Next player to have an increase is Marshall, another player that hasn't really gotten playtime. And despite being 25 years old, he's increased his dribbling and slide tackling statistics. Gibbs White, another young player that hasn't had action yet, but growth in several of his areas. Uh, we also have some growth for 
uh, and a Bakare. He had some training at the beginning of the season, and that will explain some of his technical growth, but he's also growing the physical statistics, agility and balance going up plus one, as well as a lot of this technical statistics going up. Costa, it's kind of the same case with him. We've been training him up, so you would expect him to be growing. I also want to take a closer look at Afobe because he is a new signing. He's very well balanced, 80 pace, 73 shooting, 71 passing, and 72 physical. Just a well balanced striker that can play a variety of roles for us. Three star skill moves and a three star weak foot set on him. Here's a look at his physical statistics, and already his attacking positioning has gone up plus one. Uh, technical statistics, his volleys have gone up plus one. He does have the trait to back into a player. So whereas Bonatini, we sent him the instructions to um, get behind, we may have Benicafobe to be more of a target man for us. Uh, but I'll be experimenting with uh, with what works best for a Fobe, and that way we can really get the most out of him. Bonatini has had a great start to the season. He's gone up plus one, growing across a couple of his statistics. Uh, but I believe I have one more player here who has increased his statistics, and that will be Cavalero improving his sprint speed as well as his crossing, long passing, and marking. Jota yet to increase in his overall, but some growth to his physical statistics and technical statistics. So he's not far away from being a 79 rated player. We have several changes to our player training for this month. I've given spots to House to work on his defending, Neves to work on his dribbling, Gerwa to work on his passing, and a Bakari to work on his passing. And finally, our new signing, Afobe, will be working on his shooting, particularly the attacking positioning, finishing, and shot power. As a result of our decision to replace Bath with Cody, Bath has approached us just before our upcoming match against Middlesbrough, saying that he wants to see some playtime because he has been playing well recently. And that's a fair point to bring up, and I do plan on featuring Bath in this upcoming match. I'll probably bring him on as a substitute at some point in the game. I'm really pleased that we're able to play our first league match of the season at home, and I haven't made too many changes to our starting 11 compared to what we've been using in the preseason tournament. The only major changes is that I've started Ndaya over Saiz at the center defensive mid position and I brought in Cody for Bath. Now for the striker situation, I still have Bonatini as our starting striker, but I do plan on featuring Afobe at some point in this match. They play a different role for us, so depending on how Middlesbrough match up against us, I may bring Afobe in early in the match, or I may bring him on just for the last couple of minutes. When you're a forward and you come into a new club, you know from your own experience, Alan, you want to make a good start. Here's his chance. It's his start today. Yeah, a goal here would certainly help his cause. It would relax him. You don't want to go three, four, five games not having found the back of the net. I would argue that Middlesbrough will be our closest competitors for the league title this season. They made some big money moves in the summer, and they have a very capable side. So this will be a tough first test for us in the league. There's Baker on the ball to Loney from Chelsea. Had a great touch, and we're able to intercept Neves. Finding Podence. Now Jutta over to Costa. Find the overlapping fullback. This is Douglas into Ndaye. We're doing very well to hang on to possession. Podence with a little bit of space. The fake shot. Now to our fullback. Maybe we can loft him across. It's Doherty to the far post. A good cross. Not a great header though. Costa with the first real chance for us to get a shot on target and we're not even able to test the keeper. It's a free kick for us just outside the 18 yard box and I'm tempted to have a go with Douglas. Maybe he can get this around the wall and on target. Good effort. And that needs to be punched away by Randolph testing the keeper. And I want to see more of that from our attackers. We're going to send in this cross and see if one of our center backs can get a noggin on it, but it's Randolph to collect. Dama Traore. He's going to be a dangerous player that we need to watch out for. He's very quick and agile on the ball. Here's Fabio. Finding Clayton, he might have an effort. A nice tackle by Neves, and he's able to get it cleared as well. Podence, this is an attack for us. And we just need to slip through Bonatini. I believe he's onside. He'll look to test the keeper. Randolph, another good save. The former West Ham man is playing extremely well in this match. Good ball. Out wide to find Costa. Maybe Bonatini can make this run through. An excellent through ball. Not much support for Bonatini. But again, we're testing the keeper, and we just need to continue doing that. Maybe... A deflection will go our way, and it's really just a matter of time before we can get this opening goal. Middlesbrough haven't done much on their attack. Here's Podence going to the byline, crossing into the far post. Another good cross sent in. We're able to hang on to possession. This is Ndaye. Douglas. Looking for that pass inside. This will be Jota. 
some skill moves, but he's unable to execute. That's one half down, and I feel like we've been the better side today. We're not hanging on to as much possession as we usually get. Really 50-50 with Middlesbrough, but I know for a fact we've had more than one shot on target. If we continue to test Randolph, I know one of those will trickle into the back of the net. I'm going to make our attacking change relatively early on and give Afobe a chance to be the hero for us on the opening match day fixture in the league. He has a history with Wolves. We'll see if he can replicate some of his history today. Good win by Ndaye. Jota finding the pass. This is Costa. Now a Fobe. Jota once again trying to find the ball on the wing. And Middlesbrough, I would almost say they have a five of the back formation going on. Either that or they're playing very defensively. And I think they might just be going for a draw today. We're going to still attempt to get the winner. Now Middlesbrough attack, lightening up. It's Adama Traore, finesse shot to the far post. Fair play to them. They caught us on the break. And it's one of their best players, Adama Traore, to finish that one. Oh, Doherty. Looking for the pass or the cross inside. We might be able to answer right away. Randolph makes another save. He has been Middlesbrough's, Middlesbrough's man of the match, saving several chances. To be fair, we should have done better at the header and not have just shot it right at him. But we just need to keep pushing on, guys. You can see there are seven saves for Randolph, whereas Ruddy has only had to make one. We'll play this one in the box, almost getting fouled. Good play by Costa. Just needs to get the shot off. And of all the efforts to beat Randolph, it was one that I did not expect to go in. We answer just minutes after Middlesbrough get their opening goal. And still 20 minutes left to play in this one. Man, this is going to be an interesting match. With roughly 20 minutes left to go in this one, I'll use the remainder of our substitutions. Bully coming off and Bath. We'll see out the remainder of this one. Prince will also be substituted on for Ndaye. There we go, here's Ruben Neves. He's gonna shoot from range. And that was a decent low driven shot. Just about trickling into the far post. I think he had Randolph beat. Daugherty, open player on the far post. Randolph with the save, the rebound. Oh my goodness, Randolph. That must be like his 10th save in this match. That one was the most unintentional of saves. It just hit him in the back. We're just going to keep trying this cross. And sending a low driven one to Podence. He's open. And he did very well to create the space. We're able to get the winner. Or what may be the winner. Which is five minutes left to play. And Podence continuing to show why he was worth the major signing. So now it's time to go the other way. It's not always easy for a team to achieve that. Go on the front foot. Can he pick somebody out? Are you kidding me? There is no way Middlesbrough are going to score that. No, I feel like we defended very well in that situation, but sometimes when the CPU wants to score, they're going to score. And in this, quay, in this case, Braithwaite was able to tuck that one by Ruddy. As the ref calls for full time, I think Middlesbrough are very grateful to have gotten a point out of that one. You can tell from the statistics, we created attacking chances. And that's something we were missing out on the preseason tournament. So I am very optimistic about our future in the league. If we can continue to put those numbers up against other opposition, we're going to pick up three points more often than not. Man of the match today will go to Douglas. He got that crucial assist that gave us the go-ahead goal. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see that out with the victory. But again, I'm very happy with how we played as a team and our attacking unit looks very strong. We'll close out the episode by playing our first match in the Carabao Cup against Oxford United. But before jumping into that fixture, I wanted to highlight a change that I made to our formation. And I saw several requests for me to use the five of the back formation more often. And I've done just that by creating a secondary formation for us to use with a secondary rotation of players. This is what we'll be using in our cup fixtures and I've switched back to the default 5-2-3 formation that the game loads you up with. Another perk of using a secondary side is that you're able to maintain player fitness and we're able to go into this match with a fully rested side. But one of my favorite things about cup matches is using these players that I wouldn't normally utilize in our league matches. It gives me an opportunity to test out some other players and if anyone is exceptional in these cup fixtures, maybe I'll consider using them in our league matches as well. Well, he's looked the manager at what they need in the transfer market and he's decided that a strong central defender is what's required and here he is making his debut.
Oxford United do sit one league below us, but I'm trying to not let that impact my mentality going into this fixture. If the Middlesbrough match serves as any indication, we saw how quickly momentum can change in a match, and I am just trying to put in a stable and consistent 90 minutes. It's a good ball played out wide, and here's Oxford United on the attack. And Howe's trying to put in a tackle. Our left-footed center back does well to get the tackle in and also start the counter-attack. Here we go. It's Saiz playing it out wide to Vinagre. He has more pace than the defender trying to track him down. We're playing it in the middle. It's a good ball sent in. And it's Prince with the effort blocked by the Oxford United center back. But we are off to a good start. Good header one. And we should be on the attack here. Prince carrying it forward. And needs to find an outlet. Now to Saiz. Out wide to Ofosu IA. We're looking across this to the far post. It's a good cross sent in. Eastwood does punch it out. Prince again. We're getting all the deflections going our way in this one. And this time it's Vinagre. Cross to the far post. It's going to be blocked. And we shoot it on the volley. I believe that's our fullback. Ofosu IA pushing up. And he gets a good shot on target. We get the 1-0 lead 30 minutes into the match. Actually, looking at the replay, it was Saiz that pushed up from the center defense in mid position, just being at the right place at the right time. And our player that's usually known for being a prominent defender for us gets the first goal of the match. Here's Saiz playing the ball in the middle. This is Enabakare, gets out muscled by the defense. Maybe we can win it back, but no. Ref calls for halftime. And we go into the break with a 1-0 advantage. Not bad from our team. We could have maybe converted it to 2 or 3-0. But ultimately, we have the lead to go into the break. I'm happy. I think if we just keep things the way that they're going right now, we should be able to hang on for the result. I'd love to add a second goal just to have that extra bit of cushion and prevent some of the momentum swings that FIFA 18 can provide. We'll make one attacking change at the break, moving Enobakari to right wing and substituting Marshall off for our striker, Afobe. I want to get him as much playtime as possible so that he can really find his role within this Wolf side. Well, then it goes. Still here. And that's not a great deflection, and it falls to an Oxford United player, Zhang Jin. One of the few chances they've had in this match, and it sails into the back of the net. I feel extremely hard done there. Here's a Fostu IA. Maybe looking for the run from a Fobe, but instead he has another pass inside. This needs to be a finish, and it's Prince pushing up from the center mid position. Both of our center defensive mids have been the one to score goals, and this is unheard of. Both Saiz and Prince putting in impressive performances. Big header won by Bennett, and now Oxford United just trying to hoof the ball forward and hope for the best. We're able to win it back in the midfield. Prince... Now over to Jero, looking for a Fobe. We're still trying to get his first goal, and he has some space here. Has a few defenders left to beat. Trying to get it on his right foot, but Williamson just punting that one away. With not much time left now, I'm going to use my two final changes, bringing in Neves for Prince, who manages to secure us the go-ahead goal. Neves will provide a bit more fitness and stamina, and hopefully help us keep that lead. I'll also bring on Podance for Enna Bakare, who's played a variety of roles in the attack. Oh, that could be a pen, and this might be the chance for Afobe to get his opening goal. He forced the penalty. It would have been a first-time shot otherwise, and from that sort of range, you would have thought that he could have finished. We will let Afobe take this one. He has 73 penalties, which is all right with me. And we'll see if he can put this off to his right, the keeper's left. Not too much power on this one. Just tucked away into the corner and he slots it by. The keeper goes off in the wrong direction. And hopefully that will be the first of many goals for a Fobe at Wolves. Trying to slip it through. That's good movement forward here. Oh, this could be another penalty. A Fobe is just forcing all the penalties on these Oxford United players. And if he can do that for us consistently, hey, he'll be worth the transfer price tag that we pay for him. We'll let him step up to take this one again. He just wants to take on these defenders and score goals. This time, I feel like he's going to go the opposite direction. Maybe the keeper will think he goes the same way. We'll put it off to our left. The keeper goes the right way this time, but you won't be saving that penalty. It's 2 for a Fobie, and it's 4-1 for Wolves. 
Oh, that's going to be one back for Oxford. Nice through ball to find the attacker. I don't think that'll make an impact on this match, though. That was arguably one of our best attacking performances, certainly our most clinical attacking performance. Managing to get four goals off just seven shots on target, the two penalty kicks certainly helped with that. But man, the match today going to Saiz. He put in a full 90 minutes, scored a goal, and overall, he was just a fantastic player. Also, managed to secure two assists, which is not bad at all. But guys, that'll wrap things up for today's episode of the Wolves Career Mode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.